All right, now, everybody, quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Christmas, everybody. Oh yeah, it's Christmas, everybody. Welcome to the Ink and Paint Club podcast. I apologize for our absence lately. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it's all good. Uh, I'm JD. I'm Kyle. I'm Andy. All right, and uh, we're here to talk about Christmas specials. Uh, I apologize for our kind of scattered schedule this month, uh, jobs and... The holidays, so, what do you want from us? The, we have lives! <laughs> Me, not so much, but, you know, these other two, they have... I lost press- my job. I don't have much of a life now, do I? Oh, Kyle. Well, oh, we're, we're gonna cheer... The episode's we're, over. We're gonna, put in, we're gonna put in some Christmas cheer. <clears throat> Krampus lady. Huh. Sorry. Anyway, breaking the illusion. Uh, so, for those, for anyone new here, uh, the Aka Paint Club is just a uh, little podcast the three of us do where we just sit down for an hour or so and talk about cartoons, because that's what we like to do. Um, best synopsis ever. Deafening silence. <laughs> All right. It's just missing crickets. Uh, so, in the spirit of Christmas, since Christmas is like two days from now, uh, we figured we'd talk about some of our favorite Christmas specials from over the years, uh, and how they delighted us as children, or as adults, I don't know. How's that sound to you guys? One of those. <laughs> One of those. Uh, so... I guess it's acceptable. Alright, well, you know, if it's, it's, if it's something you guys are into, I mean, I'm down. Uh, so... I guess we can just go around and just talk about any that come to mind. I'm um, do this pretty free form this week. Uh, Kyle, you were you were saying you had a, a good one. Was I now? We were just talking about it like a minute ago. I say a lot of things, man. <laughs> it's true. Are we talking about the Packland one or the Venture Brothers one? Because I wanted to talk about both. <laughs> uh, dealer's choice. Go. You do whatever you want. <laughs> oh. How about that Venture Brothers one? Venture Brothers one is pretty amazing. I think that's where most people learned about the Krampus. <laughs> that's where I learned about the Krampus. Pretty much. I genuinely <laughs> didn't know. I didn't. I never heard anyone talk about the Krampus until after that special came out. And now the Krampus right. is everywhere. Now a major motion picture. Yeah. When it I raped Dr. Venture. <laughs> and they did an American Dad Christmas special about it. <laughs> God. Oh, Lord. American Dad ones are always cool, but... I don't know. Venture Brothers was great. I think it was... Feels like maybe... The, between first and second season? Yeah, it was... It was a long time ago. It, yeah, it was It was in between the the the, two, the first and second season. It, and it was like a half episode, so it was only like 15 minutes long. <clears throat> but, uh... Yeah, it was pretty great. It had all the characters in it, um, as far as <laughs> who they introduced. Bad guys, good guys, whatever. And it was weird because, um... Spoilers if you haven't watched The Venture Brothers, but um, at the end of the first season, Hank and Dean die, <laughs> and then they're in the Christmas special, oh, yeah. which takes place after that. So, and they never acknowledge it, so they're just alive. Well, yeah, Probably well, just non-canon. It is, yeah. I, I think it's non-canon, but it was just funny because <laughs> a lot of people were really confused. <laughs> it's like, how are they still alive? <laughs> but they died. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, that was... It's very horrifying watching their version of the Krampus, which is like this giant goat man with his tongue hanging out. All It's like pretty traditional-looking Krampus from... I was going to say, that that's, that's the Krampus. It's, it's not just, very... And then, you know, he just tries to rape Dr. Venture the whole time, so... <laughs> Cause... That's like, I just looked it up, and that's all that they're showing, <laughs> picture-wise. It's like, that's all they took from it. <laughs> I mean, what else are you going to... No, I... 
I like it. It starts off really weird, like a really weird dream. Yeah. Naked Dr. Venture flying. Like most Venture Brothers episodes. <laughs> <laughs> really weird. But, uh... But, uh... No, I liked it. It, it was pretty cool. I need, I need to get back into this show since they're coming next year. Next year! Yeah. I fell off on it. I mean, I'm I'm up to date from where they are, where where they left off. But yeah, I I should probably go back and rewatch some episodes. Um, just it's been a while. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Tiny Joseph. Tiny Joseph. <laughs> yeah, that was one of uh, the moles from uh, the Monarch. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because they put him in the nativity scene. <laughs> yeah. Oh lord! Yeah, it, it was. It was such a weird and abrupt Christmas special. Yeah, it didn't. It just ends with them like, did they die? What happened? No, it's they were trapped in Bethlehem. And they were shot down near Bethlehem or something because they were oh, that's right. transporting illegal like radi- radioactive substances. <laughs> it's the after the credits thing, isn't it? I thought it was. Uh, I thought they didn't even do credits. I have to rewatch it. It's been a while. It was a good one, though. I mean, it was definitely one of the, like, rare Christmas specials that was actually, I don't know, it was really, like most Venture Brothers stuff, it was actually kind of well thought out, and... <clears throat> yeah. Like, it was an impressive one, and like I said, it brought the knowledge of the Krampus to more people. <laughs> and more people need to know about the Krampus. I'm going to teach my children about the Krampus, so they'll behave. Because you know it's it's I mean, not it's it's bad it's, it's, there. it's not you know it's not bad enough that you know Santa gives you cold. You need some scary demon that'll come and whip you if you're bad. Threaten your birch branch. Th- threaten your children with physical violence from a demon spawn. But isn't the, well? The you know what? Go on. No, I was gonna say you know what? Some kids today deserve it. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. I was gonna say was isn't the whole. Legend is he'll either like beat you or take you. That's what yeah, it's like either he beats you to teach you, or he take you and eat you, <clears throat> or he feeds you to the uh, underworld or something. I mean, what is wrong with the Krampus? Germans? They were tired of their kids acting like dicks. I guess so. <clears throat> Fat lot of good that did. <laughs> am I right? <laughs> I don't know, man. I think kids in general are just assholes. Yeah. So, Andy, what's one of your favorite Christmas specials? I guess since I mentioned it, I talk about I really like the American Dad Christmas specials. Which one? <laughs> well, like, go, explain to us the. Well, that's the, the thing. The, like, they all. Like, the American just Dad specials are are funny because they all kind of take place in like the almost like the same canon. <laughs> like, it's it's really weird. Each Christmas special. Like, one Christmas special involves them act- thinking they accidentally killed Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Because Stan makes Steve use a gun. <laughs> and they accidentally kill they thought was just a mall Santa. So they bury him. And then it turns out it was the real Santa, and he's out for revenge. So, basically, the whole Smith family has to hide at this... Uh, has to hide in this cabin and fight off an army of elves and polar bears and reindeer and Santa Claus polar... is basically like this crazed warlord. It was the polar bear from the Golden Compass. <laughs> I, that was a helmet. That was the helmet that was used to stop Santa. <laughs> um, that was Jeff got as a Christmas gift. See, it, it it really pisses me off that they never use that hillbilly again. Like I really like that character. Yeah, it was kind of they had a nice Donkey Kong reference because Roger was learning to how to make moonshine. Not not only that, they have the part where uh, the music where he's singing it. <laughs> now, oh, where he's doing the Donkey Kong. Yeah, music? <laughs> doing the music himself. It's pretty. And funny. the sound effects when you when you throw a barrel. Yeah, <laughs> it was. I don't know. And then the I don't know. There's so many of them. Like they all do. Like the American Dad specials are just funny because they start out as like these simple Christmas stories and then they go completely I, off the deep end. My favorite one uh, as for the ones that I remember, I think there's a couple more that I haven't watched. I love the one where basically um, it's Stan reenacting the Wonderful Life story because like 
He's having like a. Sh- I think he's like having a really shitty Christmas. So like this Christmas fairy comes, or an angel comes to him. And is like, I'm going to show you your childhood and so show you uh, Christmas wasn't so bad. So she like time travels him back to the 70s and he runs off. <laughs> and then she loses him in the 70s. <laughs> that one was okay. I think they got better when they got even more insane. Like the one where it basically turned out that. It turned out that the rapture happened. I love the rapture one. But Stan, you know, like the basically, it turns into every like yeah, the rapture happens. Stan becomes Snake and Plissken. Stan, Stan becomes Snake Plissken. Demons take over the world. Jesus is like this wasteland warrior. <laughs> they have to take out the Antichrist. And they go on this crazy mission where they have to break in, and the Antichrist basically turns out to be like a crazed Batman villain. He's like the Riddler. <laughs> he's basically the Frank the Frank Gorshin Riddler. And I love it because he's just so... all these crazy stupid one liners and it's It's amazing because yeah, like they spend like or go ahead. looks like I picked me some oopsie daisies. <laughs> After he accidentally shoots the what he thought was a tiny possessed Asian boy. <laughs> no my favorite is when he shoots the uh it's when he shoots the there because basically the Antichrist whole thing is that everything is the opposite of Jesus. So he puts a in the Antichrist lair, he puts a nativity scene on the roof or on the ceiling, yeah. upside down because you know everything's the opposite with him. <laughs> and uh, Stan shoots the uh, wise men off, and they fall on these demons they're fighting. Goes, it's raining wise men, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jesus breaks some guy's neck with his legs and goes, what can I say with me? The thigh's the limit. <laughs> oh my god. And he puts on some sunglasses. <laughs> like, it's just, it's great and the John Carpenter soundtrack of nothing but like 80s tin <laughs> just helps seal the deal. It's pretty beautiful. I love it. It's it's great and the one that I really like that just came out it was, it was I think it was last year it was the uh, they finally did a Krampus episode where it turns out Stan's dad trapped the Krampus <clears throat> as a kid. Oh. So that's why kids were basically running amok. Steve that's is acting like a, a major you know, dickhead. Krampus comes to life and steals him away. Oh, no. So Stan has to like make a deal with Santa to go and break in and rescue St- uh, Steve from the Krampus. And it just turns into this crazy Beauty and the Beast s musical where the Krampus isn't really that bad. <laughs> oh my god! <clears throat> and then there was one more one that I remember that uh, basically turns into the Omen, where really a the... baby who turns out to be the Antichrist. That was the uh, and... like the prequel for it. Yeah, because at the end you find out that the Antichrist in that. Becomes the Antichrist in the Rat episode. Oh my gosh. His name was Nemo, named after my favorite book. The movie adaptation of Nemo. <laughs> oh my god. And then I thought about it, wait a minute, Nemo backwards. <gasps> oh my god, this is so uh, good. The American Dad specials were very off the wall. And I know everyone usually says that American Dad sucks, but I think that it's people honestly not giving it a chance because they assume... Oh, well, it's by the same guy, the family guy, so it's probably the same thing. And it's like, I'll admit, it started off rough, but after a while, American Dad becomes a superior show. I've I've been binge-watching uh, the series right now. Like, that's pretty much what I'm watching. But no, American Dad's fucking phenomenal. Um, it doesn't go down the same. It really did start off rocky, like you said. It, I can't yeah, watch the first time. Yeah. Uh, First, second, maybe third season. I'm not like really into, but I think the switches to AG is like really fantastic. Well, yeah, because it stops being Family Guy with different characters. And actually, like I don't know, they don't use cutaway gags. They don't see that was I mean, the one. Know, that's the main insanity. thing about American Dad that I liked is that it got it did Family Guy humor, but didn't rely on the stupid cutaways to. Fill time. Well, they they like live in that universe. They don't live in way universe. They right. have pirate cats that wear that <laughs> go in uh, hot air balloons and shit. And that's in their real world, not in a cutaway. That's like the best fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so 
So I highly recommend uh, Netflix, whatever you can get on. I highly recommend checking out the uh, American Dead Christmas specials, all of them. <laughs> They're all worth watching, but the Rapture one probably gets... That actually probably gets my vote as most rewatchable, just because it's so it's so fun to watch if you're a fan of like '80s action movies, '80s movies in general, or just Doom or anything like that. Because there's so many references and so much to like. It's just it's funny because it's such a departure from American Dad style. Mm-hmm. Like they have like this crazy interlude where it it show where it's explaining what the Rapture is and it's using all these painted images that were drawn by the team that did American Dad. Oh, yeah. it, it reminded me of the episode where they did like a World of Warcraft thing, where it was just yeah, like it completely was, different style. They basically this like, okay, now we need to draw like this. <laughs> so what's your favorite, JD? Yeah, JD, you gotta get on this. Um, I don't really have a favorite. I'm just kind of going down okay Kyle you're up now no (laughs) okay I did have I I do have one and I don't know if you guys remember this um I I would watch Cartoon Network a lot on Christmas time because they had a lot of the better specials I think um but do you guys remember the Christmas episode from Foster's Home (laughs) for Imaginary Friends I really did not care for that show. So. Oh, really? Oh, I gosh. also didn't really care for that show. Oh, well, I did like that <laughs> show. I thought it was adorable. I thought I thought Blue was one of the biggest dickheads. Oh, he is a time. dick. But that's the whole point. He's a dick. But um, that's a, that's a terrible imaginary friend. <laughs> yeah, he's he's kind of an asshole. He's even an asshole in the Christmas special. <laughs> but oh, um, what a surprise! I liked. Foster's uh, Christmas special because it's basically a big homage to um, like Charlie Brown and A Christmas Story. Um, just a lot of these older uh, Christmas stories because ba- basically the whole conceit is that Mac kind of becomes disillusioned with Santa because he like logically, he, he kind of comes to the conclusion that Santa isn't real to the same way I did that it like logically doesn't make sense how it, how he works. So they spend the entire episode like trying to scientifically disprove Santa. <laughs> it's kind of heartbreaking, actually. <laughs> um, and then like Blue spends the entire episode like trying to get more presents because he lives in a foster home and they don't get happy Christmas. Is it a colossal wiener? Well, no. It's like there, there was like a, there's a whole thing at the beginning like saying that like they don't have a whole lot of money, so like only everyone in the house only gets like one thing that year, and he becomes a huge dick about that, and you know. But I don't know. It's I always get really sad with um with with sad children at Christmas. I don't know why. I ha- I I feel for children. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I bet you feel children. Shut up. God. I'm trying to have a legitimate feeling, a moment here, and you just... God. Christ. Uh. But on that note, I I, I have, I did watch the, uh, the Charlie Brown Christmas again this year, because that's, you know, tradition for every person on the planet. Do you, do you guys hate Charlie Brown as well? No, he's cool. Oh. It's all right. I mean, I think his friends are jagoffs. Well, yeah, but uh. I mean, I feel like Charlie Brown really should get some better friends. Yeah, I the Charlie Brown special gets a little. I don't know what the word for it. It just gets it's it's very different now that I watch it as an adult and kind of realize that the plot just there really isn't much of a plot to, um, <laughs> the the whole thing. It's, it's just a lot of things happening. And then it ends. <laughs> Things happen. But isn't that stuff like stuff happens? All the peanut stuff. I mean, it's kinda. Like not really a plot, but it just right. Kinda... And the thing, and someone pointed this mm-hmm. out. I don't know who pointed this out to me. They spend the entire episode like telling you about this Christmas pageant they're putting on, but you never see any semblance of like what it's about or the performance of it. You you they never show you any of it. <laughs> And I it did. kinda like that one remember when hey, remember when Kyle was watching the Peanuts movies and he got really pissed about that weird uh, interlude where it was Snoopy ice skating? Yeah. That's like the beginning yeah. that's the that that's, about right. that's like the opening of this movie or the specials. The opening's them just skating for like a good two minutes. Ugh. But 
Yeah, that is... I have to agree. And I know it's the time, but, like, nowadays, I I don't appreciate the the random biblical explanation for Christmas. He's like, what's Christmas? It's Jesus' birthday. Jesus' birthday's in the summer. We put Christmas in December to overlap a pagan holiday a thousand years ago. <laughs> what's wrong with the pagans? <laughs> I have no problems with the pagans. The Christians have the problem with the pagans. <laughs> Fine. All right. What, Kyle? You do you have another one you want to talk about? Yeah. Let's talk about the the um yeah the Christmas Carol with Mickey Mouse. That's one of my favorites. But what I about know, you know what? I should have assumed they did one of those, but I didn't ever know Disney did. Really? It's with Never Scrooge thought. McDuck. Oh yeah, is is that where oh, he ca- is that where he comes yeah, from? Yeah, you know. Oh man, can you understand a word JD said? No, he's pretty robotic. I can hear you guys. Well, let's keep talking, shall we? Yeah. Anyways, Scrooge and Marley and Mickey and and the wait, the who's characters. Marley? Uh, I think that's Goofy. Yeah, Marley Goof- was oh. his his partner. And Pete is death. I do love Pete. <laughs> oh my god, I love that so much. Cigar but, chomping Pete. <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was kind of cool because they they brought in a shitload of, of Disney characters, like fucking the characters from uh, the Wind in the Willows are in there. Mister Mole and Mister Rat. Oh yeah, Mister Toad in there. I don't think Mister Toad's in there, but I know the genie or not the genie, the <laughs> giant from. Uh, oh yeah, because he's he's Ghost of Christmas Present. Yeah, he likes From... pistachios. <laughs> Who was the Ghost of Christmas Past? Past? I want to say that was Marley, wasn't it? Well, no, because you get Marley is the one who tells him about the ghost, and then you have the past, present, future ghost. Oh, it was Jiminy Cricket. Oh, duh, that's right. I Jiminy Cricket, now. and then and then the giant, and then uh, Pete. Then Pete. <laughs> I do love Pete in this, because he's just, like, such a dick, and he's just sitting there smoking a cigar the entire time. Yeah. Isn't that Pete's whole thing, is that he's a dick? Well, yeah, it's just he's uh, he's, he's a sinister dick this time, Red, because he's the... And then he fucking pushes Scrooge into hell. It's true. <laughs> that, sound, that sounds like kind of a typical thing for Pete to do. Wouldn't he do? I'm sure he'd do that to Goofy if he had a chance. Probably. Pretty much. How did he score a hot wife? Am I right? <laughs> Oh, Peg. He's, just, he's a salesman. He's a car salesman. He could he could talk. A wife <laughs> with copious amounts of Rule Thirty Four or whatever <laughs> rule that is drawn. Oh God. I I just like that. I don't know. It's kind of weird that Donald's like the happy one in that movie. He's really it really happy. is. Wants to give him a wreath <laughs> and everything. Oh yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. Like at work today, I had to kill some time with the clients and. I just found like a playlist of old Disney cartoons, and Donald Duck always seemed very pro Christmas. I mean, usually it was other characters ruining it for him, mostly Chip and Dale. Yeah, I always, I always hated that. Um, he's always so happy, and then someone shits on his parade, well, and then he to, turns into the bad guy. Well, to be fair, there was one that we watched where Huey, Dewey, and Louie were making a snowman, and Donald was bringing a tree back, and he just decided to be a dick and fucking ride a sled right through the snowman. Uh, <laughs> so there are, cool, there are occasions where Donald Duck is not the victim. <laughs> or he is the victim of his own. He's a victim of a machine of his own designs. Oh, That's, that is true. I think I think there's a Mickey Mouse cartoon where Mickey cuts down <laughs> Chippendale's tree. Oh. And it's like Pluto's <laughs> fucking around the whole movie. Something like that. That's sad. Yeah, that sounds like most of the ones I watched today uh, kind of blend together. Pretty much. <laughs> huh. Sorry. There, it's storming outside, and I keep thinking I hear people screaming. That's terrifying. I, yeah, a little I hope bit. That there are. No. <laughs> I hope it's not the cats outside. Anyway. What if it's the cats having sex outside? It could possibly be cats having sex outside. Anyway, <laughs> it's not Christmas. That's the best time. 
That's the only time I can get hard. Whoa. Anyway. <laughs> Andy, your turn. Let's see. Christmas specials. Well, I think we're all familiar with the Rankin Bass Christmas specials. Oh, yes. <clears throat> wanted... I mean, nothing, nothing to me says Christmas like watching Rudolph. <laughs> we, we wanted to do a whole show based on that. Yeah. I mean, we could. We could make this a double-length episode. If you just want to talk about yeah, Rankin Bass for an hour. <laughs> I don't know. That's how we were lucky enough to get this episode done. It's true. But do do talk about Rankin Bass. I, I, I enjoy well, it. I mean, uh, we already talked about one of Rankin Bass's feature films, which unfortunately was not a very good start. Oh, jeez. For the uh, <laughs> Mad Monster Party. Yeah. Great posters by uh, Frank Frazetta. Really boring letdown of a movie. Oh, jeez. But the Rankin Bass Christmas specials all... God, like five of them? There's a number of them. Like, I don't even know how many. The only well, one. They did, well, the only ones they I remember. Jack Frost. <laughs> yeah. I only remember there's Rudolph, and then there's. Um, I think it's called Santa Claus is Coming to Town, which is the one where you get, like, Santa's origin story. It's. Oh, where Santa Claus looks just like Kyle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They were watching that today, or the guy, the clients were watching that today at work, and I walked by, and I was like, oh, Kyle's on TV! <laughs> <laughs> it was I, think we need to, I think we need to have that comparison picture on the on the Facebook page. I'll do we that. Do. Um, I really think it totally looks like. And the only other one that I can remember, and I don't know if it's inherently Christmas, is um, when they did the Rudolph and Frosty crossover movie. Uh, that? Rudolph's <laughs> shiny beer? Oh, is there more than oh, one? No, Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July. <laughs> yeah, it's we were Ricky watching. Rooney is Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Rooney is Santa Claus, and they. Okay, we were watching this. We were watching this a couple weeks ago, and it's it's weird because I don't hadn't seen it in years. It's weird because they retcon Ru- how Rudolph gets his nose. It's not just he's not just born with it. He's graced with the magic from from the nor- from this god angel thing. <laughs> To de- so he has the power to defeat an evil snow wizard. <laughs> Whoa, it's pretty metal. <laughs> it's just like it implements all these really unnecessary fantasy elements into this really simple story. <laughs> well, like, well, yeah, because you know, um, the uh, the year no, what was that? The uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah, that totally made perfect sense. I mean, I watched that movie. Here's the thing about the Rankin Bass movies: as a kid, I only ever watched Rudolph. Yeah, that was it. That was all I needed. Rudolph was good enough for me. I, I really did not need any other one. But I always was aware that there were other that because I always saw commercials for you know the heat miser and the snow miser. Kyle loves and their mom. Jack Frost and like you know all that and Santa Claus is coming to town. Last year I was watching one of the houses for work, and I was watching Christmas movies with the guys, and I ended up watching The Little Drummer Boy, which is really dark. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that kid was that kid had like that kid was nihilism incarnate. Yeah, <laughs> didn't give a sh- didn't give a fuck about anybody, and I couldn't blame <laughs> him. But um, yeah, and then I watched uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, which you know they had the what was the name of the place that the, like Burden? Bur- I it's been Baron a while, of man. Bergenworth or something. No, Bergenworth is from Blood yeah, it, I- it, yeah. He goes to this town and. Bur- uh, Burgermeister. Yeah, Burgermeister. Burgermeister. That's what it was. And it was living in the town of uh, Somber Town, and Somber it's all town. about Santa Claus. Santa Claus starts off as looking like just like Kyle <laughs> until he grows a <laughs> beard. Yeah, I'm looking at pictures of him right now. It is Kyle. It's Kyle <laughs> with more light in his eyes. It's Kyle with more light in his eyes and a bigger upper body. <laughs> Damn. Kyle, oh, you just need to go find yourself a Bass. Santa suit. <laughs> Rankin Bass is setting unrealistic beauty standards. <laughs> With puppets, no. Also, but yeah. like, yeah, and like that was a pretty whacked out like uh, special because you had so many. You had that whole town, and God, what was the name of the weird? The Snow Wizard. <laughs> yeah, once again, the Winter Warlock. The Winter Warlock. I love that guy. I really, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in Rankin Bass, like. <laughs> pitch meetings like I know. a bunch of guys sitting around in suits with cigars okay okay we need a christmas special what do we got to work with guys come on come on come on we've got santa okay what can you add to this okay uh, well, christmas okay, wizard we warlock. kids like warlocks okay throwing a warlock uh uh 
What do kids like? They, they, they hate uh, uh, Castro's in the news, right? Let's make a guy who's like Castro. <laughs> wow, that's actually a pretty inept comparison. I mean, I don't know. It's just like a dictatorship, and it just keeps going. And then, if, then, then of course, the year without Santa Claus, I finally watched, and I always wondered. I'm watching the movie because I was like, oh, this is where the heat miser and the snow miser come from. You know, those characters that everyone seems to know and love. Mm -hmm. They show up in the movie. Not only do they show up in the movie, like, what, a half hour in? Yeah. But they barely do anything. (laughs) Yeah, you know. (laughs) Instead, we get another crappy Santa Claus story. (laughs) Yeah, Ranger Bass is kind of hit and miss, so... uh... And it's like, it sucks because the Heat Miser and Snow Miser songs were great. <laughs> it, it was just because Batman and Robin. <laughs> you bite your tongue, Little sir. Little fact, in Batman and Robin, the uh, Mr. Freeze is forcing his lackeys to sing the Snow Miser song. And that's not even the worst part of that, about that movie. <laughs> I think that movie's the best unintentional comedy to ever grace the world. That is... I, I, that is... Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I can't speak. <laughs> I, that is un- so that much. is unironically Mel's favorite Batman movie. <laughs> it's I'm sorry, it's terrible. Don't get me wrong, but it's so entertaining. It's so bad, so cringy. And it's like you just can't help but look at it and go, like, God, someone people worked on this. Schwarzenegger so, worked on this. People still let Joel Schumacher make movies after this. Oh, well, he apologized. Good. <laughs> he needed to. He said he was sorry for that. Good. Oh, Lord. <clears throat> no, Rankin Bass made one in 2001 with Eartha Kitt. Oh, shit, they still make Christmas specials? I think, uh... Oh, wow, this was live action? No, this was uh, live action. What the hell am I saying? This was, uh, hand animated. Huh. Oh, shit, hand I remember animated. watching this one. Which this one? It's premiered on Fox. It's called Santa Baby. Is it about and... Santa as a baby? No, it's it's about, like, Christmas in... Uh, Christmas in like not not necessarily the ghetto, but mm-hmm. I mean it was it was it was it was ethnic, <laughs> which was pretty cool actually. Urban. Yeah, there you go. You know, it was kind of cool because you got all these, you know, it's all these weird pale faced muppets and weird puppets skulking about. It was kind of cool that they got one that didn't focus on a white family. <laughs> I uh, got one. One what? Lay it on us. What about King of the Hill? They did King of the Hill. A great Christmas special. Which one? So the first one really pissed me off. I fucking hate that episode. Oh. Completely. What's the first one? Well, the the first one that I can think of. I hope it's not the first actual one, but it's the one where Bill. It's called Pretty Pretty Dresses, and he dresses oh. up as Lenore. Oh, that, that one really know. bugs me. That is such that a disturbing has, episode. It's a disturbing episode, but it has some pretty good lack here in it. I mean, it's, I mean, it's funny and sad at the same time to kind of watch Bill's de- mental state deteriorate through the episode. Oh, you keep me, Bill! <laughs> <laughs> like, that, the episode's worth it for that line alone. You have to give credit to Steven Root for that. I love King of the Hill. And, <laughs> and then there's there's the one Actually, where the old lady tries to die in his house. Yeah, this is, oh. that is an episode I do not like. Oh, God, that no, is... because it makes Hank the bad guy, and it's like, it makes... do you want someone to die in your house? It makes Hank the bad guy because he doesn't want to let Mrs. Wakefield die in his house. And I'm just like, man, can this guy ever catch a break? I feel the same way about the uh, serpent episode where the uh, oh, snake yeah. goes to the toilet, and yeah. everyone just eats Hank. Turns on him. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, what? <laughs> now what? That was weird. There, there's another Christmas episode. Isn't it the one where he like spends it building habitats for humanity, and then he has <laughs> like cotton gets family. really <laughs> he gets really racist and like cotton punches Jimmy Carter. <laughs> yeah. No, like... what? No, actually, what happens is uh, that's I think the best one because it's just so ridiculous. But um, it's not hippie peace, Dad. <laughs> this is a joy family. I mean, any episode that has Cotton Hill front and center is usually comic gold. I was so sad Cotton when they killed Hill. him off. Yeah, well, yeah, but he went down the way he wanted to. 
Let's just remember that that Cotton Hill went down like a man. <laughs> we but, salute uh, you, sir. I love that episode. Yeah, Tojo's. I didn't know much about my father. Just that he killed 50 men and he had a severe hatred of Tojo's and Nazis. <laughs> but, um, that Christmas special where Jimmy Carter appears for no reason is great because it starts off innocently enough with Hank helping build a Habitat for Humanity with, you know, his work with Mr. Strickland. <laughs> what happens? like a, I think it was a drunk driving deal or something. Yes. As most things at Mr. Strickland, it was involved. It involved the law. But what happens is, Hank finally is going to get that promotion, where to, to above assistant manager, and he says, "I love you." To oh, Mr. that's right. And that that sets the whole thing off. And it's just, <laughs> that is the catalyst that causes the most bizarre chain of events. They decide to spend Chris the. Uh, Hills decide to spend Christmas away from Hank's dad. With the and spend the, yeah, the, the Nefcos. I think it's like the Nefcos. The, the right. Christmas, with Christmas with new tra- new Christmas gra- tradition. Christmas with the Nefcos, <laughs> and it involves. Then basically they get there, and Cotton takes the house hostage and kicks the family out, and he's guarding it with a with a nail gun. <laughs> <laughs> and Bobby's really upset. And he ends up running into Jimmy Carter of all people, but because his apron, because his shirt says JC, Bobby thinks it's Jesus Christ. <laughs> because he works as a carpenter, of course, and he brings it's, peace uh, to people. Yeah, it brings peace to people on the holidays. So Jimmy Carter has to come in. I mean, and, clearly, I, I just love how they just talk shit about him at the end of the episode. Oh yeah, man wore a sweater. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, my favorite line uttered by Jimmy Carter in that episode is, uh, "You have to come on. Your 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 child, your son was a baby once. Everyone hated that baby. Hated <laughs> a baby. <laughs> Everyone hated. That baby. Oh my God! Everyone hated that baby. God, no. look, dude, he's like, you promised I could shoot your car. <laughs> like, wait a minute, did you promise my father you could shoot my car? <laughs> it blows up the fucking window. <laughs> Shoots the window. Out. They told me that glass was bulletproof. Let's get the hell out of here. Cotton Hill is a treasure. Cotton Hill, man, I was, I was, I was sad we didn't get one more Christmas special with him in it. Ah, uh, I don't think there were. I don't know. King of the Hill had a couple of them, but that was, I think that one was the one that really stuck out in my mind as one of the best ones. Yeah, <laughs> it's the one I remember. And then, then there was another really kind of depressing one where Hank, I uh, know Bill. Ends up being one of those guys oh, who gets the letters from Santa Claus, and he goes he crazy up... with it. I forgot about yeah. that one. That's a, that's a really anyway. Uh, contra as as opposed to every episode with Cotton Hill, which is usually comic gold. Any episode focusing on Bill Dotrieve usually it's the most depressing shit you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> usually, really drags you down. Wait, is that the one where he decks his house out with all the Christmas shit, and he like? Almost has a relationship with a woman, <laughs> and, then, yeah, but... and then Bobby, Connie, and Joseph get drunk and bounce house up back. Yes, he, he dry cleans his uh, coat, and it's all super shrunk. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it, it's just a depressing episode. Yeah, it, it makes me the most sad is that like he almost has a real connection with a woman for once in his life, and. That happens a lot, though, like with Reverend Stroop. And well, everybody. that was like oh, yeah. that was one of the first. That. that was one of the first times that at least I could remember. And that, was... that's probably one of the first, uh, like ones where it actually happens. Yeah, that just really pissed me off because it was like just because everybody didn't like it means that Bill can't be happy. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, that that was another. There, there were there are definitely some episodes of King of the Hill that I just don't like from that standpoint, but the good ones usually balance it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. What about a pack Christmas special? Oh my god, that was just watching it. <laughs> <laughs> do tell us about Anna the pack. Barbera doing what they do best, <laughs> fucking everything up. <laughs> That's right, Kyle's no fan of Hanna-Barbera. Oh god. Do you think that since Dobson thinks that uh, Mario and Luigi are from 
Brooklyn. Oh, jeez. And and Link has brown hair and all that. <laughs> Do you think Pac- he thinks Pac-Man has a family with the dog and cat complete? I mean, and a Pac- Prob- I mean Pac-Man Jr. I mean, What's... Pac-Man did have all that, you know, he did have all that, you know, stuff in the games. Yeah. Uh, what was that game, though? There was Pac was... Advent. There was, uh, there was, oh, there was Pac-Man 2. I don't know, that was the weird, like, point-and-click adventure one. Yeah, that one. I think that was called Pac-Lan 2. Because okay. that needed to be made. I remember, uh, that was actually having not that a... Bad of a game. I remember a friend had it on, uh, I think Sega CD or something weird like that. Oh, Christ. <laughs> but, yeah, it was just... I found that one really odd because everybody wanted to eat each other, and it was just <laughs> super weird to me. I thought it was just the ghost. Oh, yeah, well, anyway, for the people who aren't informed, uh, there's been a few articles going on around this, but it's not as obscure as everyone makes it out to be, but Pac-Man had a cartoon. In the 80s. Because shocking enough, he, not, as, not so shocking, it also had a Christmas special that actually aired on Cartoon Network pretty consistently around the holiday season. Yeah, you guys, you guys said it was obscure, and it was like, I remember seeing that every single year. Same. I've seen I've seen articles going around of people talking about how, you know, they're, uh, oh, it's this really obscure, awkward, and I'm just like, I swear to God, I've seen this thing numerous times. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I, don't I know. have fond memories of seeing that with, like, Captain Crunch and, and uh, like, Fruity Pebbles commercials with, like, I don't know, Frosty and that kind of sh- bullshit for the season. Seasonal I mean, uh, Crunch Berries were the best. <laughs> they turned your I... milk white. Milk was already white. I, I know that was the joke. Thank you for making it. <laughs> That's, That's my job. <laughs> I'm the joke killer. Anyways, yeah, it was really, really weird. I, I well, find yeah, it. Cause... Go on. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, well, yeah, it was weird because you have this world where everyone's a pack person or a ghost. Yeah. And then suddenly Santa Claus crashes in. And they have no Santa. they have no knowledge of what Christmas is, and so they have to educate them. <laughs> Santa has to it's a strange little movie. And, and then, then the ghosts are gonna ruin Christmas for all the human children. But then don't they have like a change of heart at the end because they realize, oh no, that means we don't get presents. I think Pac Man just makes like a, a very impassioned speech to them, is like for once in your life can you stop being a dick? <laughs> You're gonna ruin. Kinda you're like gonna ruin Christmas for all these children. Episode of Fosters. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, just like, come on. I mean, come, come on, guys. Stop being a bunch of dicks. Oh god. I just found it weird. They're like, I'm gonna eat you. Not if I eat you first. Well, I mean, that's the whole point of Pac-Man. It really is. I mean, it's just weird and in cartoon form where they're like, I'm gonna eat your family. It's like, fuck, man. That's. A little scary. That's a, a little buzzing. Well, that's, that's, what, that's what Pac-Man was all about. They weren't in a maze, though. They were off-duty. <laughs> Pac people gotta eat, too, you know? Yeah. yeah. They eat pellets. Power pellets. Are you there? I think oh. the thing that bothered me the most about it is they kept calling them ghost monsters. <laughs> Okay. Ghost was copy. Well, Ghost was copywritten. You have you have to you have to realize it was the early eighty or it was like the mid eighties, like when a lot of Pac Man lore probably hadn't been established yet. Yeah, but I mean Ghost Monster, that's very redundant. Well, you know. They well I mean, you can be a ghost and not technically be a monster. But they're not the monster ghosts, like they're they're not the ghost of a monster. Yes they are. Wrap your mind around. Hey, now, that now we're just getting into a whole weird area. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just love that it's like so product of its time. Santa's like, "Well, I'm glad that my kids list is all digitized now on computer." It's <laughs> like, oh shit, that's that's at that time, man. My question is, you know, with how often Santa's sleigh seems to get taken out, you would genuinely think he would know how to fix it himself. <laughs> True. I'm just saying, he's got magic. He is pretty he's, magic. 
Well, I mean, he does know about pterodactyls, doesn't he? <laughs> I mean, but everyone knows that pterodactyls can't stay in the screech of the guitar. <laughs> still hold out. Again, uh, uh, again, yeah, again we would kill for Kiss Me, <laughs> Save Santa. I mean, we got Kiss Me, we got Kiss Me, Scooby Doo, which is awesome. Because they have that whole <laughs> Sailor Moon magical girl transformation. But I want to see Kiss fighting dinosaurs. <laughs> Yeah, I want to see Kiss having to save Santa while he is being held captive by pterodactyls. This is that from the Family Guy episode where it's like he ruins Christmas because he. Tells. Well, no, it's because like, he ruins Christmas because he's trying to prepare for Y two K. No, no, that was uh, New Year's. That, that, oh, okay. that, yeah, the Christmas special was where um, he just really wanted to watch TV, but Lois was being really big on tradition and like uh... wouldn't let him go do anything fun like he was just having a shitty christmas Aww. he had to and donate Lois... one present to to toys for tots but he donated all of them <laughs> oh yeah, yeah because... last minute christmas shopping i need to and watch was... that one again that shit's awesome oh my favorite part of that is when frosty comes to life and lois <laughs> punches his head off <laughs> and they put, they put the hat back on he's like oh what the hell is that lady's problem he's like <laughs> let it go frosty he's like no no, no just wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> just how angry he was. Oh, Lois lights it, lights it on fire. Take and it off. <laughs> take the hat off. Put it back on. Put it back on. <laughs> Family Guy had some pretty good Christmas specials. I think that was the most like memorable one because of Kiss Save Santa. <laughs> uh, actually, Cleveland. Though, I mean, believe it or not, their Christmas special was actually kind of good. I, I, yeah. I, Watch the show? I don't think I've seen that, though. Yeah, They either. basically tell their favorite Christmas story, which is Die Hard. Oh, my oh God. Yeah. I remember now. That, like that, like, I know everyone has mixed feelings. On, or I know everyone really kind of doesn't like the Cleveland show. I didn't think it was the worst thing ever, but I granted I would watch it as background noise, mostly on Netflix. But the Christmas special where they basically reenacted all of Die Hard was kind of great. Wasn't the bear, like, the main bad guy? Yeah, the bear was Hans Gruber. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Lester was the angry Swedish guy who wouldn't die. Junior, just... was, uh, Junior was, the fa- was the cop. <laughs> <laughs> I just find it so funny that they have a white guy doing Cleveland's voice, the black guy, and then they have Kevin Michael Richardson doing the voice of Lester, the white guy. Yeah. I got it. Oh my god, that is guy. I, you know what? I didn't even piece that together. <laughs> Breaking down racial boundaries. Good That's job, funny. Seth MacFarlane. Well, even though you removed your <laughs> you removed your name from the uh... did he? I know they were making fun of him. I think that when Cleveland ended up back on Family Guy, there was a short scene where they just started ripping into the Cleveland show because it got canceled, and Cleveland had to end up back on Family Guy. And I could have sworn someone said, yeah, well, you know what? When the creator of Family Guy doesn't want to be attached to your show, maybe it's time to pack it in. <laughs> like, they were just... They were, they were really laying into it pretty hard. And then they made fun of Bob's Burgers, which was kind of mean. Because I like uh, Bob's Burgers better than any of them. <laughs> eh, I don't know. Bob's Burgers started off really good, and then I just kind of... I kind of feel the same way. Kind of lost me after a point. Oh, yeah. I think I'd, I just I my, my beef with the uh, Bob's Burgers is characters are annoying to be annoying and like that gets tiring very quickly. Annoying voice, isn't this funny? Yeah, <laughs> I think Tina is the only one who ever seems to have any sort of like development. And this is coming from the guy that really liked home movies. Well, yeah, hey, home movies is good. <laughs> Well, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I just think I just prefer Christy Shaw as uh, Mabel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, that's over. Gravity Falls is yeah, getting canceled. When's, when's the last episode coming? They don't even fucking know. <laughs> is that right? I know they recorded it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I know this isn't related, but I saw this this video on Tumblr the other day. It was Alex Hirsch telling Kristen Shaw she just recorded her last line as Mabel, and she just flipped her shit. Screaming. It's like, why would you do that? It reminded me of how Melanie acts. Yeah, well, I guess. 
I, I see a lot of of Melody and Mabel and Kristen Shaw, so... Damn. Except, you know, she doesn't have that high-pitched, that weirdo of a voice, but, you know. It's not that weird of a voice. <laughs> anyway, Christmas. <laughs> How um, about that Christmas I, in two okay, days? I actually... I was reminded of an old Christmas special I watched a lot as a kid. Um, I hadn't seen news. Did you you guys see the Snowman? The Eric, Amy children's Bills. book thing. Yeah, like the, no, was, you know what I never actually watched it. Yeah, we were. I saw you reblogged it, but I didn't. I've never actually seen it myself. Oh yeah, it's it was made a long. Oh God, how long ago was this? It was made back a long, long time ago. I'm trying to think of when the, it was made. It was made back in '82. Um, it's not 80s long far ago, far Jesus, man. It's like, <laughs> God, that's almost 40 years ago. Christ, <laughs> we're getting old. Um, no, I. Shut up. It, there's there's two there's two specials by because um, the, they're based off the books of this author called Raymond Briggs, um, and a, lo- a lot of the art I like because it's like the entire special is done like it's drawn in colored pencil. So, uh, it's really interesting to watch animation like that. Um, but we were watching The Snowman yesterday. Um, it's really kind of beautiful for how, you know, the the time that it was made in. Because, like I said, like, the entire thing, um, you know, adapts the style of the book it was based on. And, like, the entire thing's done in color pencil. Um, so you see, like, a lot of the pencil strokes on everything. And especially for the background, it gets, like, kind of still... Uh, stroke work in the back, but um, <laughs> it's kind of sad because um, the entire special is like this little kid who lives out in farm country England, like builds a snowman and it comes to life at night and they go getting all kinds like of... Like they do. Like you do. Um, and, you know, they just go do stuff around the house uh, and then they fly up, <laughs> then they fly off to the snowman party in the North Pole and they meet Santa. But it's really kind of depressing because, like, they come back, uh, like, the snowman brings the boy back to his house after the big snowman party, and he's like, alright, well, you gotta go to bed. And the little boy wakes up the next morning and the snowman, like, has melted and is dead, and then it ends. <laughs> like, that's the end of the, that's the end of the special. I mean, I think they were maybe banking on the knowledge kids have of Frosty, like, oh, he'll be back next year. I guess, but it's like, it's really a somber ending, it just, like, ends on this really kind of sad song. <laughs> Oh, wait, I actually uh, thought of another Christmas special. I don't know if anyone has ever seen this one. Cartoon Network would play this. This is one of those weird, like, it's one of those weird sort of off. It's not, I don't think it was really made by any big production company, but do you guys remember this town that Santa forgot? It sounds familiar. Sounds familiar to you. It came out in 93. Dick Van Dyke is in it. <laughs> oh, that's a sign of quality. But well, it's actually pretty good. No, that wasn't but that wasn't the... that wasn't a sarcastic remark. <laughs> I was actually serious. Oh, no, I'm saying, like believe it or not, it's actually like, you know, for being like, you know, cuz I know typically when people think of like NBC esque um oh, Christmas yeah. specials, they'll think of like Santa got ran over by a reindeer. Uh, so it would seem we had a bit of a technical issue uh, with the recording here today. Um, it looks like our recording cut off about five minutes of the end, so not like too much, but again, we're sorry about that. Um, uh, you know, these kind of things happen. Um, pretty much all the ending was, uh, just wanted to thank everybody for listening to the Ink and Paint Club this year. Uh, it really means a lot to us, um, for you as our regulars or in those of you kind of li- listen on and off um regardless uh thank you for <laughs> listening to whatever this is um like always uh there's links to our social media pages uh, as well as our personal pages in the description for you if you'd like to follow any of that that'd be awesome um and you know like comment subscribe that'd be cool of you too we can also we all yeah, we always help uh gain our listenership and you know share these videos or these or podcasts wherever you're choosing to listen to this um so that really helps us out a good deal too uh so i guess on behalf of myself and kyle and andy uh here and everyone else who helps us record from time to time uh, i guess merry christmas or 
Kwanzaa, or I guess Hanukkah's over, and um, whatever winter holiday you choose to celebrate. <laughs> um, and I guess we'll just catch you next time. Uh, I think next time we'll be doing like a 2015 wrap-up kind of podcast, and it'll probably be next week. So, uh, again, thanks for listening, and we'll see you later. Bye. Thank you.